Okay, this is better here. Hmm? Okay. So anyway, hi guys. Uh, I'm gonna start a presentation. So uh, uh, I wanted to say something in uh, Belarusian. So, Drobai, Drobai Dian, Drobai Dian, right? No. Please. I'm sorry. I I I don't speak uh, Belarusian. Uh, I don't speak Russian. Uh, I don't speak English. Uh, I speak uh, Frenglish, um, a mix of French and uh, English, because I'm a French speaker. So um, I have to speak very fast because there is a lot of content and only uh, 35 minutes. And because of my accent, I'm um, already apologize ahead of time if you don't understand everything I'm saying. So I'm sorry. So let's start. Uh, bonjour, everyone. That's the uh, English translation. Uh, so. My name is uh, Laurent. I'm uh, very happy to be here today. Very honored to be here. It's my first time in Lithuania. <laughs> wait, uh, wait, wait, no. First time in Belarus. Uh, I, I am confused. Uh, two countries in two days, so I don't know where I am. Um, I tried to make some tea, but I could not understand the uh, buttons. <laughs> and it's kind of ironic because the machine is called Mystery. So it's really a mystery to use the machine. Uh, so, but I, eventually I, I, found, I saw someone making it and I, I stole the, the command, right? So I'm from uh, Belgium. Uh, so when I travel, people don't really know where Belgium is, so I have to show them on the map. Uh, it's right there. Uh, it's not, not far from here, actually, just a few hours uh, of plane. Uh, and currently, I think we have the same weather as uh, Belarus, so it's raining all the time. Uh, it's a picture of my home city, um, and I live there, and the picture was taken in summer, so only two weeks every year we have summer. Uh, maybe like Belarus, I don't know. So why am I, why am I talking about this? Um, we have a lot of beers in Belgium, but I'm talking about this because I'm the, I'm the founder and also a member of Orval.club, which is an association of people who strongly believe that Orval is the best beer of the world. And this is a picture of the, of the, the beer. So uh, about a year ago, I created a club, and I, I made a website for the club. <laughs> and and uh, the website is great. I mean, I'm not a web programmer, so. Uh, and it's about a year ago, because yesterday, I received this message saying that the domain will expire tomorrow. That was yesterday. And uh, I said, Oli, I, I really, sorry yesterday. I really need to, uh, to update my domain, so I go on, uh, on, the, on the web interface and I realized that I forgot to bring my uh, two-factor authentication device with me. And I'm talking about this because right after there is a talk about security and, and Jeremy is going to talk about that, so it's very important. Always bring your device when you travel. So eventually I could not man, uh, update my, my domain, so right now the web page is not accessible. Uh, but maybe tomorrow it will be. Anyway, if you want to know more, there is a gem written by Juanito. So you can install it, gem install Orval. And then there is a bunch of stuff. Of course, the website of the club doesn't work anymore, but the rest of the command work, and you can also see the logo of the beer in ASCII. So a uh, very quick, um, my name is Laurent. I'm both a, a, a programmer and a company founder. So it's kind of a hybrid approach uh, I have to do um, half of my time programming and the other half uh, doing boring stuff like business. So I've been a Ruby developer since 2002. Uh, I, was, I used to like Perl. Perl was my favorite language. Then I realized that I could not um, um, read, and read, uh, read my code anymore after a few weeks. So I had to switch to a different language. Sorry about the noise. Then I worked at Apple for several years on uh, several things, mostly OS 10 releases, um, the BSD layer of uh, OS 10 and iOS on apps like iLife application. Um, at Apple, I also started the MacRuby project, which you may have heard of. And eventually, I decided to uh, do my own company after. And I took MacRuby and I created RubyMotion with it. So this talk is about RubyMotion. So it's a tool chain to write uh, native mobile apps in Ruby. And 
we really underline native here because it's very important. Some people really some people think that RubyMotion is similar to other two chains such as PhoneGap or React Native, but it's not. RubyMotion is really really native. It lets you write the same apps that you would write in Swift, Objective C, or Java. So I'm going to explain that uh, it's cross-platform, so you can write apps for iOS and Android, and also OS 10 if you want, but that, that's less of a market. And it is designed for Ruby programmers. So I'm personally a Ruby programmer, and I don't like to use what the vendors give you to write applications. So I designed a tool that I think all other Ruby developers will like to use. So it's very important. And the main goal is to provide a consistent experience when you have to write cross-platform apps. So use the same uh, experience. So if you look right now the state of uh, mobile development, if you want to do native mobile development, so the real stuff, not the uh, phone gap or something, uh, you can use Objective-C and Swift on, on iOS, and on Android you have Java. So you have already three languages. Uh, then when it comes to the environment on iOS, you need to use Xcode. Which, which is Apple's IDE, and on Android, you need to use Android Studio. And finally, you have two set of APIs, app, uh, APIs for iOS and APIs for Android. So with RubyMotion, we try to fix the two first rows on that table, so we, we allow you to use Ruby on both platforms, so you don't have to switch languages anymore, you can write everything in Ruby, which is kind of great because uh, you, you can actually share code at this time. If you use uh, IS, uh, Objective-C, Swift, and Java, uh, you, can't, you cannot really share code easily. You need to use an intermediate language like C or C++, uh, and it's kind of uh, complicated. Also, you can use the same environment. So use RubyMotion, you get to use your, uh, the editor you already use and love and like, and the terminal. So there, are no, there is no IDE with RubyMotion. You just use the terminal. I will show you. And, but you still have to use the IS API and the Android API. And a very important design aspect of RubyMotion is the unified runtime approach. Uh, this is something that's very, very important. And we actually provide custom implementations of Ruby for each platform we target. So we have two, two, main, two main targets, iOS and Android. And we provide custom implementation of Ruby for, uh, for each one. So we ship two implementations of uh, a Ruby runtime. For iOS, we re-implemented the Ruby runtime on top of the same runtime that powers the Objective-C language. Uh, Objective-C is the main language of Apple. It's a language used to describe all the APIs. You may have heard of Swift. Swift is the new language of Apple. But if you write an application in Swift, you're still using the Objective-C API. So everything is still Objective-C under the covers. And here, what we did is that we, we, we studied Objective-C. Objective-C and Ruby are very similar. They are both very dynamic languages. Even if Objective-C is based on C and, and is statically compiled, it's still very dynamic. And we Objective-C is, is powered by a runtime, a, a C library, that, that is used to create a, the entire thing. And we use this C library to actually re-implement Ruby. So, so basically, it means that in RubyMotion, everything you do in Ruby is actually a, a, an Objective-C variant. So it, any object that you, crea that you create, uh, any Ruby object that you create, any Ruby method that you define, any Ruby class that you uh, define as well, are going to be uh, Objective-C uh, objects, methods, and classes. And vice versa, it means that you can access the entire set of APIs from iOS uh, directly from Ruby. So that we don't have to bridge uh, classes or methods here. Everything is truly native. And for Android, we, do, we did the exact same thing. We, we actually used the, the GNI. Uh, GNI is a is a C API for the Java virtual machine that you can actually use to talk to uh, the Java VM. And we use that to, to re-implement the Ruby runtime as well. So it's very similar. That noise is very annoying, right? OK. Maybe that's better. OK. <laughs> there is a, this is a Hello World in uh, RubyMotion for iOS. And the stuff that you see here is actually, uh, if you had to write the same thing in Objective-C, it would be the same code. So it's a direct uh, API to API mapping. So it's, it's Ruby, so you can read it. But if you had to write it in Objective-C, it would be pretty much the same, except a bit more line. Uh, oh. No, it's fine. I, I prefer to use my. Oh. I prefer to use, um, it's okay. Yeah. 
So basically, the, the stuff that you see here, for example, a UI window, a UI screen, are actually Objective-C classes defined by Apple, but you can just access, access them directly from Ruby. Uh, it is as if they were created in Ruby because we use the same runtime. Uh, also, all the method that you see here, for example, uh, text equal, size to fit, or this one, make key uh, invisible, are actually Objective-C methods. And it, you can just call them from Ruby. And if you type break, you get this on the simulator. And for Android, it is very similar. Uh, the stuff that you see here would be the same in Java, if you had to write this in Java. And you can just do all the stuff that you would expect, and it just works from Ruby. Like, for instance, uh, app Android app activity is a class, a Java class, and you can just subclass it. And then you can override the, override the onCreate method, and you can call super. That this is the Android way of creating an activity. And instead of doing this in Java, you do this in Ruby. That's, so that's pretty nice. And if you type break, you get the Android emulator. Uh, another aspect of RubyMotion is static compilation. Uh, this is also what makes RubyMotion a bit different compared to, uh, uh, for example, CRuby. Uh, in RubyMotion, we don't have an interpreter, so we don't interpret bytecode. What we do is that we compile ahead of time the Ruby source code into machine code. So at the end, you get an executable. So we don't actually interpret code at runtime anymore. We create a binary. This is the same process as uh, Swift or C or C++, for example. You get a binary at the end. So we use static compilation, and RubyMotion apps are uh, truly native binaries. So for, on iOS, it's actually an executable that you can run on the device or on the simulator. And for Android, it's a GNI native library that we load dynamically uh, when the application starts. So everything is really machine code. Uh, the original Ruby source code is actually not in the application anymore because it has been converted to LLVM bytecode and then uh, to machine code. And the, ap the applications created by RubyMotion by default are uh, just a couple of megabytes. So we try to make the compiler uh, as uh, slim as possible. And then there is a command line interface. Uh, you can use uh, the terminal than any editor you like, uh, such as Vim, Sublime, TextMate, RubyMine, and Emacs. If you have more than uh, 10 fingers, you can use Emacs. Uh, I use Vim. Um, this is an interesting analysis of various editors for typing pleasure based on the latency of typing. And as you can see, there is only one true editor, which is Vim. Uh, the others are, uh, so you can use Vim if you want. Anyway, uh, creating projects is very easy from the terminal. It is pretty, pretty the same thing as Rails. So uh, motion create template, you choose a template, iOS, Android, or OS 10, and a directory, and it's going to create a project in that directory. In the directory, you have a rec file, and by default, the rec file is just this, so four lines, very easy. And the entire project configuration is there. So if you type rec config, you will see a bunch of variables that you can set, and we try to guess the best value for every uh, thing. So we, we try to, uh, to derive all the project configuration for you. And you can customize everything here. So for example, you can set the code sign certificate, the provisioning profile, the name of your uh, main activity class, the name of the application delegate on iOS, your icon, your custom fonts. But by default, we try to guess everything for you. And you don't have to use Xcode. There is no Xcode project in the RubyMotion, or there is no Android Studio project in the RubyMotion project. So you don't you need to use the uh, Google IDE or the Apple's IDE to configure. And then we have a bunch of tasks to run your project on the simulator or the emulator and on the device. So if you type break device, the application will start on your device. And then when, you, when you're ready to uh, ship your application, you can type, uh, yeah, yeah, we have two targets to create uh, binaries that you can actually uh, give to Apple, to the App Store, or in the Google Play Store. And this is very, uh, very, uh, very, uh, then this is the same process as you would use if you are using Java or Swift or Objective-C. Once you have your package, you have to uh, submit it to Apple or Google. So uh, we actually have a partnership with JetBrains, so we, we work very closely with them to support RubyMotion and RubyMine. RubyMine is, is uh, JetBrains uh, IDE for Ruby. And I wanted to show you a few screenshots. This one is about uh, smart auto-completion. Uh, as you may know, uh, as you may have done, if you have done a little bit of iOS programming, methods are super, super long. So here, JetBrains develop a very, very smart auto-completion for RubyMotion based on the context of what you type. So that's great. Uh, there is also inline documentation if you want to know what, what you're actually calling. Um, this one is, uh, I think it's refactoring. They added refactoring support for RubyMotion projects. 
Uh, but this one is the most important, in my opinion. It's the visual debugger. So we can debug application in Ruby Motion. We ship a debugger for you, but it's, termin it's a terminal application, a command line. And here, you can visually set breakpoints in your code. And then it will hit the breakpoints. And then you can see all the, all the backtraces for all your threads. And you can also access the, the objects that are actually in, in, the, in the frame. So this is really great. And it also works on the device. So you can set broad points on the device and then run, run your project. And finally, it also supports for a testing. So you can write tests. And it has these nice icons there on the uh, top bottom, on the bottom uh, left. So if you want to know more, you can go on jetbrains.com slash ruby slash rubymotion uh, to, to know more what RubyMine is doing for RubyMotion. So what is RubyMotion exactly? It is uh, all these things. It's a static ahead of time compiler for Ruby that generates machine code. Then it's two runtimes, two implementation of Ruby, one for iOS and OS X and tvOS and watchOS, and one for Android based on Java. It is a build system written in Rake. So everything is based on Rake. And it's also a REPL. Ah. This is cool, right? So some, some very quick news. Uh, Ruby Motion starter for a very long time. If you wanted to try Ruby Motion, you had to purchase a subscription. And now we have a free version of Ruby Motion that you can actually download. Uh, is it free? <laughs> it's free as in beer. So uh, not happy. So it's fully featured. So uh, everything you can do with the full subscription, you can do it with starter. We don't have like limitations. So you can, you can pu publish your apps on your device. You can publish your app on the app stores. But there is the, just one thing is that we have a splash screen by default that says uh, made with Ruby Motion. And if you want to remove it, you have to purchase a subscription. But you can help us to keep working on Ruby Motion, right? So you can download Ruby Motion Starter at rubymotion.com slash download. Um, yeah, I'm just putting this URL here so that you can see it. Uh, so uh, some news about iOS. The latest version is 9.3. And it's supported by the latest um, version of Xcode, 7.3. And you can just do this in your rake file. And then you can support the entire new features of iOS uh, 9.3. And we try to support new versions of iOS ab about 24 hours after each release. Uh, normally, we support in just in a few hours after. Um, it's actually very easy for us to support new versions of iOS. We just need to regenerate compiler files. And it's all, all automatic. So it's just a matter of getting the new Xcode from Apple and generating our stuff. And you can download oh yeah, rubymotion.com slash download for the iOS stuff. Android M, the latest version is 6.0. It is API level 23. So to target it, you do this in your rec file. And then again, you can access all the new stuff from Android. And also, we try to support new versions of Android about 24 hours after their release. It's the same process. We generate files for a compiler, so it's very fast. Uh, there is a new version of Android that has been pre-announced a few weeks ago. Uh, but it's not fully available yet, so we're not supported yet. And we support once it's fully available. They are, we are basically waiting for some libraries, some ARM, ARM libraries, if I remember. And if you want to try Remotion for Android, you can go on remotion.com slash download, right? Uh, watch, watchOS, uh, there, are, there, there is a new version of watchOS, uh, watchOS 2.0. It's the native SDK for the Apple Watch. There were actually two SDKs, the first one, let you write application for the Apple Watch, but the application doesn't, didn't really run on the watch. It was running on your iPhone, which was connected on the watch, and you were just exposing a view. So it wasn't really uh, interesting. And with WatchOS 2.0, the application is now running on the watch itself. So it can, run in, it can also run uh, native APIs. So this is um, a quick video of, um, of a Bitcoin application written in RubyMotion for the Apple Watch 2.0. It runs on the Apple Watch simulator. And the application was written a long time ago because now Bitcoin is way different, I think. But the source code is available on our website. And there are also these guys who, make a, who are currently working on this video game. And it's all written in motion, and they have a, a watch version as well. So I'm just saying that uh, I'm, it's really supported. Um, I don't have an Apple Watch myself, but I, I know that it's working, I hope. And if you want to try a uh, remotion for the Apple Watch, uh, you can go to this uh, URL, right? So tvOS, it's a native SDK for the Apple TV. And Apple just released a new version of the Apple TV. And now it runs iOS. 
But more importantly, you can write apps for Apple TV now, which is very, very interesting. And you can write games. And Apple has, uh, lets you support third-party game controllers because the controllers they have is very boring. But you can actually use uh, more interesting controllers, and you can write very interesting games. It was announced in mid-September of uh, last year, and we supported it weeks after. There's a bunch of stuff. Uh, I'm not going to talk more about it, but if you want to try the TVOS support, you can go on remotion.com slash download. Uh, yeah, almost finished. So OS X El Capitan, uh, it is the latest version of OS X. And of course, we, support, we supported it right away when it was released. Uh, you can write, you can use the remotion El Capitan. That's very, very important. And also, you can write El Capitan apps in remotion, OS X apps, native apps in remotion. And you can download it on remotion.com slash download. There is a new Apple mouse. Uh, that has been released, but it doesn't run apps, so nothing to download. Uh, so recently, in Ruby Motion, we switched uh, everything to LLVM 3.6, which took us uh, more than a month. It was very complicated, but be because of this feature, we can now do LLVM bit code submission. So if you do, if you are, if you are. Um, if you, know, if you do some IS development, you know that Apple now wants you to submit application in Bitcode. It's mandatory for uh, watchOS and tvOS submissions, and it's going to be mandatory pretty soon for iOS as well. So we support that. It basically means that when you submit your app to Apple, you submit the binary, but you also submit the LVM intermediate language with it. And we don't really know what Apple is going to do with that. Maybe they are going to do some checking what you're actually doing in your code, but uh, you have to do that now. It's mandatory. So it, we support it. We also have a new debug format. Uh, for uh, based on that new version of LVM. It's a bit hard to, to describe here, so I'm just going to skip that. And more, more importantly, we have support for the safe navigation operator of Ruby. So have you heard about that uh, operator? Yeah, who, who has heard of the safe navigation operator? Like uh, Just a few hands. OK, so it's a, oh, it's a new feature of Ruby 2.3. And we ported it right away because it's very cool. So this is the syntax of the same navigation operator. And I think Matt calls it the alone, alone operator because the ampersand is like a, a person that's actually alone and uh, naive. Anyway, uh, it works like this. Instead of doing the code on the top, you do the code on the bottom. So uh, basically, if, if the receiver is nil, uh, the second part will, not, will never be called. It is similar to the try, try method in Rails, I think. I'm not familiar with Rails, so I know it's part of the language. And it's actually in Ruby Motion. And if you, if you want to try the safe navigation operator, you can download Ruby Motion <laughs> on RubyMotion.com. So no, very, a quick uh, slide about Motion Game. Motion Game, uh, it's our uh, game framework for Ruby Motion. It lets you write games for iOS and Android. You can write uh, cross-platform. Uh, it's a cross-platform Ruby API for uh, to write games. It has a lot of features, but it's based on Cocos 2 dx so it's based on solid foundations. And uh, with one code base, you can target iOS and Android. And it's 100% cross-platform. And I will show you a demo. Oh. Okay. So, I actually have a, so I, we don't have time. Normally, I, I, I like to type the game myself, but we don't have time yet. So I'm going to show you a version of Flappy Bird that is actually half functioning at this time. So if I type break iOS simulator. As restart the simulator, so it's not it's not Ruby Motion's fault here. It's the iOS simulator, uh, and now we have we have like the very beginning of the game, right? We have a we have a bird here, the sprite. We have and we have um, sprites that are actually moving. So I'm just gonna show you a little bit why how the game is working. Uh, a scene represents uh, uh, basically uh, a screen on your game. Initialize is the, of course the constructor, and here update. 
update is the, the method that will be called for every frame, so once every uh, 60 times per second, if I'm not mistaken. So we actually have these methods, add skyline and add ground, which actually creates two, two sprites. So we have, uh, the skyline is actually this part. And so we create two because we, we, we put one here and then the, the other one there, and we move them this way and then we basically put the first one behind the second one. So we do the same for ground and then we have a bird, uh, a bird sprite, which is right here. Sorry, right here. So, and I'm gonna show you a little bit uh, the ripple. So I have access to my bird and it has a position, oops. And you can set the position to something else like uh, 200. That works right. But uh, you can also move your bird with like move actions to a position and then you specify the, the delay, the duration. So we say half a second and it's going to move there back. So you can move it back like this. Um, we have We have a blink method that, let, that lets you blink the sprite, so we can blink three times in 0 0.5 seconds. So you can basically play with your sprites, but now let's, let's do something more interesting. Let's actually add some gravity. Uh, so we're going to attach physics box to the bird and physics box to the ground. Okay. And I think that's pretty much it. Uh, oh, and here that's also interesting. We are going to rotate the bird based on its velocity. So if the bird is actually going up, we will actually rotate the sprite, and if it's going down, we we'll rotate the, the sprite this way. And uh, and here we actually have an on touch event that's going to apply a velocity of uh, 200 in the y coordinate every time we press uh, tap on the keyboard, right? So now I can run my game again. So as you can see, every time I tap, the bird is moving, and then when I don't tap anymore, it goes down. Because there is, there is a gravity. So the first thing we can do is, I have access to the screen, and I access to gravity. And it's zero uh, minus nine, nine hundred, so it means that it's like Earth. So let's actually change the gravity rules and put it like 10, for example. And as you can see now, the bird is going up because I changed my gravity, right? If I do it this way, it should go down eventually. And it, now it's going down. Okay, you see? So that's pretty cool. And you can actually play with the gravity. Uh, so we expose all the physics, um, all the properties of the physics engine. So my bird has a mass which I don't even know what it is, but you can set any value you want, and it makes sense, but I have no idea. And, oh, where is my bird? Uh, okay, let's put it back here, for example. Okay, Ooh. Okay, it's right there. So yeah, so this is, this is physics, right? And now let's finish the game. Uh, whoops. Uh, let's finish the game. We can simply, oh, I'm going to put this message when the game is over. Yeah, game over. And uh, more importantly, we are going to enable this code, which will make the pipes appear. So every two seconds, we are going to call this method add pipe. And add pipe is right here. It actually uh, generates a random number because we don't want the pipe to look the same. We want some sort of a difficulty, right? And we, we have two sprites, the up part of the pipe and the down part of the pipe, no, sorry, this way, the down part of the pipe and the up part of the pipe. And we, the pipe also has a physics box, which means we, we, we want to detect collisions. And as soon, we put the, we put the pipe right, at the at, uh, far right of the screen, 
and then we say uh, you should move back to minus 900, which is very, very, on the very, very left. And so the bird, and then the bird has to figure out a way to, to actually get outside the pipe. Actually, I can't. I can't cheat. Actually, oh, where is my? Let's put it back to. Okay. Ooh, no. <laughs> hey, where is? No. Okay. Yeah. It's too hard. Ah. Uh. Uh, okay. Okay. Anyway. So that was the demo, right? So this is motion game. And since uh, December, we support Apple TV. So you can write application for the Apple TV in motion game. So one code base now with Apple TV as well. And motion game is now free software. So very, very important. And if you want to try a motion game, first you have to download Ruby Motion on this website. And then you can do gen install motion game. Now, uh, just, um, just a, a bit of, uh, of information about the future of Ruby Motion. That's the most important part of my presentation, so I hope you're not bored yet. Uh, if we go back to this table, this is the state of a mobile development with Ruby Motion, right? You still have to call the iOS SDK APIs and the Android SDK APIs, which means you need to have two code bases. You can share code, but you still have to have you still need to have a dedicated code base for iOS and a dedicated code base for Android, which is kind of a painful. And in the future, we want to, oh, that's weird, it didn't work. Anyway, we want to replace this with a Ruby uh, cross-platform framework. And basically, the thing is that if you make a cross-platform app in Ruby Motion, yeah, you need to use platform-specific API for each platform, and you share code, but you need to learn two set of APIs. You need to maintain two different code bases. Ah, uh, here we go. And we add the Ruby framework now. I'm sorry, I completely forgot my slides. Anyway, uh, this framework is called Flow. And my wife made this logo, which I find very cool. It's a bubble around Ruby Motion, so it's like a wrapper. It's a cross platform framework for Ruby Motion. It's kind of the rails of Ruby Motion, eventually, I hope. And the idea is that you have one code base and it runs on iOS and Android. So you don't need to have two different code bases anymore. And it's a set of cross platform libraries. And these are the, cross, the libraries we support at the moment. So we support a bunch of stuff. Uh, I'm going to show you right away. For example, this is a get request in Flow. Uh, this code is cross-platform. So you write this in your app, and it, it has two implementations out of the covers, one for iOS and one for Android. And you only write this code once in Ruby, and it works on both platforms. You can do post requests right here. Uh, I'm not sure what it does, but it works. Uh, you can reach, you can check the reachability of a host. That's important when you do mobile development. You want to present a certain screen to your users when your server is down. Uh, we have stuff to convert and to create and to parse from JSON. We have a digest um, API similar to CRuby, base64 API. We have a store API. You can uh, um, 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 key value storing uh, storage API. We have stuff for location, so you can grab the location of your device. And you can also do reverse geocoding in Flow. So if you, if you want to, to know the address of something, you can do that. We have uh, APIs for timers. If you want to execute something uh, after 0 0.5 seconds or every 2.5 seconds, you can do that. And if you want to uh, execute stuff on the main thread, you can use this API. And this is cross-platform. So on iOS, it's going to use GCD to schedule into the main queue. On Android, it's going to use a, a handler on the main thread to actually dispatch a task there, which is great because you don't have to care about that. You just use the API. And it, it, there is also a background method to execute something later in the background. Uh, this is complicated to explain, but it just works, believe me. 
And we have other sequential queues, which are a great way to work around uh, metaxes and deadlocks. So you create a queue, and then you schedule a job to that queue. And each job will be executed after the previous one has been done. And it's a, it's a great uh, design pattern if you want to do a concurrent programming and you don't want to deal with threads and locks and metaxes, because deadlocks are very hard to debug. And finally, there is a UI library to write, of course, a UI. And we have a bunch of classes. So all these classes are cross-platform. So a UI button is going to create a button for iOS and Android, for example. And more importantly, uh, we have a special layout uh, API that is actually uh, an implementation of Flexbox in C that we expose. So you use Flexbox attributes to actually uh, lay out your user interface. And this is something uh, we stole from React Native. They actually do exactly the same thing. And in my opinion, it's probably the best part of React Native, so we stole it, because I like to steal stuff. And for example, these are the Flexbox attributes that you can set in your views in Flow. So the width, the height, of course, the position, uh, padding, margin, border, and then a bunch of stuff that I have pretty much no idea what it is, because uh, I don't do web development. But it works, and I'm going to show you a demo right, very, very quick. Okay. Can you read that? So I have a, uh, we have a special feature in Flow called uh, the Super Ripple, uh, and I will show you what it is. It has, it starts the application in both the iOS. Uh, simulator and the Android emulator, but it has only one REPL. So if I, do, if I type 1 plus 2, I have two results, 3 and 3, because the first one is iOS, the second one is Android. Uh, actually, if I ask for the class of an array, uh, the super class, okay, the first one is Android, and the second one is iOS, because we actually use the built-in uh, Objective-C or Coco, uh, Java classes for Ruby. So it's a, it's a, it's a very funny REPL, so it connects to two different ter uh, processes. So I have a global variable for my background, which is basically this view. And for example, if I, uh, if I set the background color to blue, it changes right there. And as you can see, you type, you type uh, only once, and it, uh, it refreshes on both uh, processes, which is very, very cool. And of course, I have access to all my views. So these are all the all the all the views that are actually in, in for iOS. So if I get the first, the first is actually my list. I can actually add some elements like oval. Yeah. Okay. And I, I can just add stuff to my list. So I'm going to show you uh, the code, which is right there. And here is the code. So um, of course, this is the background view, which is the red stuff that you can see. Uh, the label is actually this label, best beers. List is right there. This is our list. And as you can see, I set flex equal one, which means expand as much as you can. Uh, input is right there. Input is actually uh, this field type beer name. Then we have two buttons, one, one to add stuff on the list. And this creates a, a, a button. And here we have the tap handler where we actually set something to the data source of the list. So I can type, for example, uh, A. And it gets there. Or I can type uh, L. Well. And it gets there, right? And uh, the last button uh, clears the list, so it basically set data source to an empty array. So I can clear and clear, right? So that's very simple. You may wonder, this is too simple. These are two simple applications, so what can you actually do with Flow? And I will just show you an example very, very quickly. We, we work with a, a very big customers that's, uh, that does logistic. Uh, they wrote application for logistic companies, and this is, this is an application in Flow that we wrote for them. And it's, it's just one code base, and it's a more interesting application. As you can see, it has like navigation and stuff, and uh, this is a web view, for example. 
Uh, you can filter stuff. And of course, this is Android, so same stuff. You have like, oop, no, not the uh, You can go there. And this, this is stuff at, at the team. And this code base is the same, so just one code base for iOS and Android. So it's very, very, uh, very cool. Anyway, this, this is Flow. And let's go back to the slides. Yeah. So Flow is completely open source. Uh, it's on uh, GitHub. But we are still working on it, so it's not really perfect yet. So if you want to use Flow, you should probably wait a little bit. Uh, but we'll be releasing a first uh, version very soon, 0 0.1. And the idea is that when it's, once, once it's finished, we will include it in Ruby Motion 5.0. So uh, please give it a try. Please give, if you are do, doing Ruby Motion programming, you can definitely use Flow, that's great. So what is Ruby Motion? All of this stuff plus now a cross-platform framework, which is one more thing to maintain. So recap, Ruby Motion is fun. Please download Ruby Motion. RubyMotion.com slash download. Thank you. Jacou, Jacou. Exactly. <laughs> Anyways, we don't have time for questions, but uh, the good moment that we have uh, a coffee break right now for 10 minutes, and a bad moment that you that, that this coffee break is the, your last chance to make a photo and apply to our um, contest of Ruby gems and photos. So if you have any questions, just uh, find uh, Lauren, Lauren, <laughs> sorry, and ask him. Hello. Hello. Uh, do you plan to support uh, Windows Mobile? Sorry? Do you plan yeah, to support Windows Mobile? Uh, Windows Mobile. Uh, actually, you're actually the third person who asked me this question.